Hello everybody, this is Words of Sorrow. It's been a while, but I am uploading another video just kind of because I felt like it. I was playing a lot of Johnson and I thought I might as well record a game because I kept getting the same guy over and over. <clears throat> and he's a pretty good uh, person to demonstrate against. It's Anarchist, I think most people call him. And he plays Trox. And I played him like five times with Johnson. So I kind of nailed down basically what I do with Johnson. Which the early game revolves around scouting. You go Gen 3rd, of course, standard. And you scout, you see if they're going to be aggress aggressive, you want to open hero. Uh, if not, you go double gen and expo. But since this is frontier and it's against a Trox, you definitely you don't even need to scout. You can just open hero because this is one of Trox's best maps. If they just go uh, armory fifth with a raid camp and spam CM brutes, that's a very strong opening on this map. So not gonna take any chances going double gen although most of the time you do want to scout and adapt it's just in certain situations uh, if you have the game knowledge of knowing you know if I go double gen here I'm just gonna get screwed you can automatically go hero or the other way around like on really big maps if they open hero and it's ashes or something you don't really need to care you can just go double gen and throw up a couple turrets but <clears throat> back to the game as i said i'm going to go armory fifth and i do put up a barracks because this guy has two builds he does sometimes he goes racks fourth and sometimes he goes triple gen fortifications two and double expos, which is extremely greedy, and if I just rush that, it automatically loses, but, um, <clears throat> that's not really how I play Johnson, although you certainly can rush with Johnson if you do Armory 5th, basically the same build, but be more aggressive with, uh, Bunker Drop and Flamers next to, like, a Generator at their main, that can be very strong, you just have to be very adamant about microing your hero so he doesn't die, having him alive for his... Y ability is very good for sustainability. So this time, he's actually being aggressive, which is what you should do with Trox on this map. If you're teching with Trox on this map, you're just not playing Trox correctly. If you're teching at all on this map, you're not playing the map correctly, I should say. But I'm gonna go Hero Marine Flamer, play for the map, and go from there. I also think it's a good thing to get your hero out, even if, uh, like, you just see a raid camp or something, because he can defend your base very easily. These jump pack brutes do run away, but if they had jumped to my base and started hitting at my buildings, I could just Y ability and heal them uh, without spending all that, all those resources, like 300, 100 for my restoration drones, which should be your second point, I mean your first point. Your second point is a lot more uh, malleable. You can either go uh, Pelican Drop or Bunker, or not Pelican Drop, but Pelican or Bunker Drop. You go Bunker Drop on a map like this because uh, being aggressive is a lot better and map control is very important. But on bigger maps where once you tech up into Mantis, you need more maneuverability, then that's where you go Pelican Drop. So it's kind of map dependent, it's also dependent on what they do, if you're going to be playing tech 1 or not. Basically, Bunker is just better for tech 1. And uh, Pelican Drop's better for once you have those... Um, Mantis is out. <clears throat> so I'm pushing him while denying him this node at the same time, making sure my units are perfectly split over there so that I don't die to suicide grunts. I catch another brute coming over to try and hit a mini, so I counter that. And I also recycled 
my armory for a uh, supply pad instead of a generator right away because that's that's non-standard with the gen 5th I mean armory 5th build but the fact that it's Trox on Frontier really mandates that if you go too aggressively for tech you can get overwhelmed and while this guy isn't exactly spamming jump pack roots, if he were to do that and I went double gen that quickly, it, uh, it's just a very risky and dangerous thing to do. You can get outnumbered pretty quickly. So his Chosen is finally out. It took him a pretty long time, but by this point I can deal with it. I've got my third point, which doesn't really help with infantry, so I'd say only use that against infantry if you really need something to even the odds. Since I'm stacking a lot of blue, I go for my third gen in tech 1, and since I see he's got absolutely nothing but a lone chosen, which my Johnson hero could take care of single-handedly. I'm pretty sure the chosen's DPS and speed is like exactly equal to Johnson's. It's just the fact that he has the uh, the area of effect damage and the slow with his shots that makes him so much stronger. But Johnson is not to be slept on as a hero. He also has a Y ability unlike Atriox, so he does have a few other uses. But here he's doing the thing where he double expands and puts shields up on them. This guy's not even good, it, he's just very annoying to play against, because he instantly turtles up and sits behind a shield all game. But around this time is when you want to expand with Johnson, so I'm going to get eyes on, a, on an expansion. And since I got my third gen up in tech 1, I don't have to do that in tech 2, but typically your third gen is going to be your, uh, <clears throat> your sixth building on your main. But, of course, if you can get it up in Tech 1, then why not? So I'm going to get an Armory up for the Johnson upgrade, and then an Air Pad up for Gales, and start upgrading my pads so that I can afford Mantis production. And I put the, uh, the uh, garages up on my Expo. Normally triple garage. So that I can spam them out pretty quickly. I do put a garage on a mini base there because I don't need the racks anymore. If you do end up building a lot of flamethrowers, like seven or more, you can go dispersion nozzles, and that's useful either way if you get Pelican or the Bunker. You can just bunker dispersion nozzles in front of their base or Pelican them around. But since the flamers I built died, there's not really a point. And now the composition is just going to be a Mantis, Hero, and Gale. And of course, Wolverines, uh, since a lot of people like to build Engineers, or Banshees even, the less skilled players, that is. But I'm just bullying his Chosen. You can see how good that Smart Missile is. It's got really good range and good DPS as well. It doesn't care if you're outside of the fog of war, it still hits you. I'm pressuring both his expos. Most players won't do this. This is a really, 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 this is the worst map to expo on as Atriox. A really bad map to expo on. Your best bet is to um, you know, be aggressive. And Atriox is very strong that way, but he's very weak if you play it like this. Uh, but I never said this guy was good. He's he's a grinder for sure. If you play 1v1, you probably play against him a lot. Um, but he is a good uh, a good dummy to demonstrate against because he he puts up a fight, just not a very good one. So now you're kind of on your way to Tech Three, which is where Johnson's real strengths lie. He can be strong tech 2 if you have a good mass of uh, mantis up and you have your pelican so you can threaten anywhere on the map almost instantly. But tech 3 is where he gets very strong. And your fifth point is going to be digging in deep, which makes your generators free. 
And after you get that fifth point, if you can, you can get your third base and literally just start spamming generators because they're free. Why not? Uh, honestly, this game would have been better for me to go Pelican because he really... This is the first time I've used Bunker Drop, I think. I think second, actually. Um, but really, uh, that was the safe play, going Bunker because if he played this correctly, it would have been the best if I had uh, Bunker with snipers in them. Although Atriox can go mines and then just mine on top of them. It's also better for them to use their mines on your bunker than it is to for them to use their mines in a different way that could be more damaging. But I'm pushing him, and I'm smoking his turrets with gales. Which is always what you want to do when you're pushing a turreted base. And I'm just waiting for him to beam me. I know he has beam, and I know I have my invulnerability power. I look away and get mined, that's okay. I only lose like one mantis. The uh, shield upgrade on the mantis is pretty good, it's only 400 power, so definitely get that in tech 1. Also, in tech 3, it's also good to get their tech 3 upgrade, because instead of your mainline unit, they kind of become the the secondary unit. Your composition is going to be Nightingale, Mantis, um, Colossus, your hero, of course, and uh, Wolverines. And what the Mantis does is, once they have their Tech 3 upgrade, their shots will actually weaken the armor of the units they attack. So that means the Colossus do even more damage. <clears throat> and of course, whenever you get hit with a leader power, you just mech overcharge for the invulnerability. And once you have the Colossus out, another thing you can do is... Um, you can mech overcharge, run into the middle of their army, and just stomp it. And that normally just wipes them. Uh, if you're going to do that against Hunters, you should also use um, the Combat Salvage in conjunction with that. Because normally against Hunters, you want to kite them. And that's how Colossus beat Hunters. But if you're going to run in, you're going to lose a lot. So Even with Mech Overcharge, once it ends, here I do get beamed and I just Mech Overcharge and he kills... Pretty much nothing with it. So that's your main use for mech overcharge. It's not just beam, it's good for negating pretty much any nuke. But overall, Johnson can be very strong if you make it to his Tech 3 game with the uh, aforementioned unit composition. And his LPs are also pretty good, aside from a couple like uh, his siege turret drop and remote sensors, that sort of thing. But combat salvage, of course, is very good for late game. This mech overcharge is great for negating nukes. His uh, his mag blast is great against vehicles, and also, if you don't know, if you use it on your own units, it buffs mechs. So that includes the Johnson Hero and Cyclops. So that's pretty good. <clears throat> And of course, free generators is a very big buff to your late to mid game. Um, the thing is, his early game isn't that strong. And what he does, which is half the time just tech, there are other uh, leaders that do it better, like Forge. I do find him more enjoyable than Forge, though. Of course, is that's why I'm playing, but. He's not that great of a leader, uh, but if you want to play him, this is how, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.